As UFC fans, we all kind of hype ourselves up around different fighters, whether it's a prospect, whether it's something that has a redemption story. And sometimes it comes off and you're sat there looking like a genius. You can kind of think back and go, I was on that hype train early. You know, I was talking about him two, three years ago. And sometimes it doesn't work. And sometimes you're kind of looking at yourself like, how the fuck did I a year ago think that this guy was going to be a UFC champion or top 10 or that everybody was going to be talking about him as the next big thing in the UFC? So I'm going to go through some of the guys that have had the most disappointing years in 2024 kind of from where they look like they were in 2023 to where they actually are now in 2024 and it could be for a whole bunch of different reasons it could be losing fights it could be stuff outside the cage they could have won fights but just haven't fought there's a whole bunch of different stuff but before we get into it make sure to like sub to all that youtube shit it really really does help me out a ton i say it every time but your one like could push it out to a hundred more people with the click of a button and obviously subscribe because i'm trying to get to eight nine ten k i appreciate all the love on the recent videos let's get right into it starting off we're gonna start off with Colby Covington. After UFC 303 and Ian Gary beating MVP, it kind of got me back thinking about that Colby Covington matchup again. And Colby Covington a year ago to where he is now, it's just absolutely crazy. It's completely flipped. Don't get me wrong, Colby Covington was not viewed as, you know, the boogie man of that 170 pound division. And he wasn't viewed as a pound for pound number one type fighter a year ago. But what Colby Covington was, was he was a legit challenge to Leon Edwards. Everybody thought going in this time last year when they were announcing that Leon Edwards fight, when, you know, all the rumors, the UFC hadn't announced yet, but we pretty much all knew that it was going to be Leon Edwards against Colby Covington after he beat Kamar Usman. Everybody thought to themselves, Colby is a difficult fight for Leon Edwards. It's a difficult fight for Leon Edwards. He can wrestle really well. He has elite cardio. He has decent striking, obviously not as good as Leon Edwards, but that's where people felt about Colby Covington. Right now, when we look at right now where Colby Covington is, he might be one of the most hated fighters in the UFC. And before, people didn't like him because obviously he said all that shit about Brazil. He had kind of, you know, this character that he put on. But people actually thought that he was a good fighter. Now people dislike him for completely different reasons, for way worse reasons. People dislike him because he didn't take that fight against Ian Gary, because people thought that he ducked Ian Gary, which I still think he did. I don't know why he wouldn't take that fight against Ian Gary. People dislike him because he won't fight anybody that's better than him. He won't give any new contenders a shot. He's asking for a Charles a fair fight at 170 when you have Shavka, JDM, Ian Gary, all of these guys that are coming up around you that are probably way better stylistic matchups than what a Charles Oliveira is. So it's completely flipped. It's gone from him being a real, real contender and him being someone that people think can beat Leon Edwards to now I'm looking at it and I'm like, is he top 10 at 170? Is he top 10? Does he beat the number 10 guy at 170? After that, we have Cyril Gann. Cyril Gann a year ago just coming off that John Jones fight. Don't get me wrong. It wasn't like two years ago where people actually thought he was going to beat John Jones, but Cyril Gann was still in a pretty decent spot. You know what I mean? Losing that John Jones fight, you're losing to the GOAT. There's not many more people in the UFC that you can have a better excuse for losing for than John Jones. It is John Jones. He is the greatest ever. He's never lost a UFC fight. He's had very few close UFC fights when he's actually locked in and he's trying. After a weekend of coke, you might be able to get a close UFC fight with John Jones, but if he's locked in like he was, there's nothing you can really do about it. But Cyril Gann has gone from a fighter that fought Francis Ngannou, then fought John Jones, fighting everybody at heavyweight, taking on the scariest guys on the planet. Never mind heavyweight, never mind, you know, lightweight, never mind pound for pound scariest guys. If you're going against Francis Ngannou twice, that is one of the scariest fighters you could ever go up against. And then you're going up against the greatest of all time. And now... We can't even get him to fight, like, what, Pavlovich? We can't even get him to fight Curtis Blades? I like Curtis Blades, but, like, are we fucking serious here? Now you're afraid to fight everybody that's around you? Now you don't want to fight Volkov? Now you don't want to fight, you know, Blades? You don't want to fight Aspinall? After just going through John Jones and fucking Francis Ngannou? Are you serious? He wasn't the most active champion on the planet, Cyril Gann. Like, he wasn't the most active fighter ever, but he was pretty active. He was taking fights. He took a lot of fights in the U.S. He obviously took that John Jones fight in the U.S., fought Francis Ngannou in the U.S. Why all of a sudden is he just, like, it's Paris or nothing. I'm only fighting in Paris. I'm not fighting anywhere else. I don't care what you say. I don't care what you want to give me. I'm fighting once a year in Paris. I'm fighting against the bum. He's fought Sergei Spivak. Eh, whatever. Like a top 10 heavyweight. That heavyweight division is so shallow. You're not even in the top third of the division if you're a top 10 heavyweight. That's how fucking bad it is. So realistically, that heavyweight win, it's like, meh. We're kind of like, I'm kind of lukewarm on that as a win. And then who's he going to go up against? He's going to go against Tabora or someone probably in France. He's just completely gone downhill from being, you know, a guy that will fight anybody, anywhere, taking on the toughest, scariest guys in the UFC to I'm fighting in France once a year. After that, we have Michael Morales, and it's sad to put him down here as one of the guys that I'm disappointed with. And don't get me wrong, in the overall landscape of the UFC, is he super disappointing? No, I don't think he's super disappointing in the overall landscape of the UFC, but I just don't understand why he hasn't fought this year. 
Why are you not fighting? He's 25. And the last time he fought was, what, nine months ago? Like, I thought that this was going to be a big, big year for Michael Morales. And we haven't even got any real fight news around him. Dana White kind of shut down the UFC 306 rumors with him when he got asked at the post-fight press conference. Dana White really didn't have anything to say. Michael Morales hasn't been like teasing shit on his Instagram or his Twitter about a new fight and a fight announcement coming up. Like, where is he? Like, can, can we see you fight? You're 25. This whole once a year shit, like maybe that works when you're 36. That works if you're John Jones, but you're not John Jones. I know your name because I'm super high on you and I think you're a super, super, you know, great UFC prospect. But not that many people in the UFC know your name apart from me. So like, I want to see you fight. So I'm just disappointed that Miles Morales hasn't got two or three fights in this year. And he's established in the UFC. He's 4-0, 5-0. and We could have, you know, really progressed into the rankings, but he hasn't fought. After that, we have Sergei Pavlovich, another heavyweight fighter. And there is a lot of heavyweights in here. We're going to talk about the whole division in here as well. But Sergei Pavlovich, he's kind of gone from this destroyer in the UFC. And now he looks gun shy. And I don't really know what it is. Like he looked gun shy against Alexander Volkov. He looked terrible against him two, two or three weeks ago. And he's gone from this kind of lovable Russian cyborg where it's like, he's the guy that people don't really want you to root for. But like, you can't not when he goes out there and he flatlines people. One of the most fun pound for pound fighters inside the UFC, where if a Pavlovich fight is on, you're like, oh yeah, that's going to be a fucking destruction. I'm sticking that on to where we're at now, where he lost to Tom Aspinall and then he looked like he didn't even want to fight against Alexander Volkov. And he looked like a dick at the end of that Volkov fight too. And he's also gone completely from the guy that was meant to beat John Jones. If you think about a year ago, if you were around the UFC community, all of the talk, all of the talk was about Sergei Pavlovich versus John Jones. How would John Jones do against this elite power puncher? We haven't seen John Jones against anybody that's as powerful as Sergei Pavlovich. And now it's like, who the fuck does Sergei Pavlovich fight next? Like, do we give him a tie to Ivasa? Is that the level that he's at now? Because he's proven himself to be way below Tom Aspinall. He's proven himself to be way below Alexander Volkov. He did beat Curtis Blades, but now we're kind of looking at that like, how the fuck did Curtis Blades lose to Pavlovich? So I don't know about Pavlovich. He's one of by far the most disappointing fighters inside the UFC. After that, we have Jalen Turner. Jalen Turner's not one that's as much in the last year. He's more just a disappointing UFC fighter overall, but especially that Renato Moicano loss at UFC 300. That was just a terrible, terrible, terrible loss to take. Because not only do I think he's way better than Moicano, I love Moicano as a personality. I've talked about him a ton. You know, everybody in the UFC and mixed martial arts YouTube loves Renato Moicano. But... Jalen Turner is a better UFC fighter than him. Jalen Turner is a better MMA fighter than Walt Renato Moicano is in my eyes. Then he beat Bobby Green. Coming off that Bobby Green win where he came in short notice, made 155, made short work of Bobby Green. Like he should be a nightmare match at 155. And he just seems to lose to everybody that's around him. He's what, like six foot three at 155? Like that's a monster. That should be someone that's impossible to fight. That should be someone that we're looking at as like title contender in around that title picture, no matter what. And he made the weight short notice against Bobby Green. So he can't even be like, well, the weight cut is such a huge problem for him because you're not making short notice weight at 6'3 at 155 if it's that much of a problem. I just can't see it. And I don't know what Jalen Turner does next after this Moicano loss. Maybe he takes time, fills out, goes up to 170. But even against any 170, he looks small. He might just be in that fun fight spot because he did have a great fight against Dan Hooker before this year when we were looking at Jalen Turner and him against Dan Hooker was one of the fights of the year. Guaranteed, it was back and forth, scrap. Dan Hooker got the win in the end, but it was a super, super close split decision. And then before he fought Gamrot and Gamrot's just Gamrot's here, probably going to lose to him. But he was, you know, his stocks were really high going into this year and we've seen him lose to Moicano and now he's just kind of gone off the wagon. After that, we have Rob Elise de Spagna. Rob Lee's Spagna is someone I got sucked into. When I'm talking about prospects that if it comes off, you look like a genius. I was talking about Rob Lee's Spagna as like he's one of the guys that could beat Tom Aspinall. He might be Tom Aspinall's toughest challenger in two or three years. And now it looks dumb. Now I look like a complete and utter fucking idiot for saying it. And I'll take the L on the chin. Rob Lee's Spagna, he just proves that this kind of one-dimensional UFC fighter is completely gone. And that Alex Pereira is not the example. He is the complete outlier in the UFC. And even then... Like, I just don't even know if an outlier is a strong enough word. For Alex Pereira to be able to do what he does in the UFC, not being a great wrestler, not having great jiu-jitsu, is crazy. But for Rob Lee's de Spagna, got fraud checked by Waldo Cortez Acosta. We didn't see him really be able to get up. When he got wrestled, he wasn't able to do anything. And his power is elite. Don't get me wrong. His power and his taekwondo and his kickboxing is all elite. But if you're going to get out wrestled and you're just going to get smoked, we can't do anything for you. If Waldo Cortez Acosta is doing that to you in the wrestling, imagine what Tom Aspinall would do. Imagine what Curtis Blades would do. Imagine what all of these guys towards the top of the division would do. So Rob Lee Spagna, I'm disappointed that he wasn't better this year. After that, we have Conor McGregor. And obviously me being Irish, I'm a big fan of Conor McGregor. But the fact that that tough season was filmed in February 2023, February of 2023, 
him against Michael Chandler, that tough season was filmed. And we still haven't had the fight. It is fucking crazy. We still haven't had the fight. We still haven't seen him in the cage since then. That was when, like, they could have started to get ready. They could have got him in the cage. We didn't have a date for fucking ages because him and the UFC were just screwing around. We finally get a date. And Conor McGregor pulls out. Like, like Conor's getting old now. Michael Chandler's getting old now. They're going to have to fucking wheel them in. They're going to have the cane like Stipe Miocic walk into the cage by the time that they get there because Michael Chandler's going to be about 40. I could put Michael Chandler on this list too, but I feel like it's not Michael Chandler's fault that Conor pulled out. And the payday, obviously he's done the math for the payday to be worth it for Michael Chandler. But I would have loved for Michael Chandler to be busy. And Conor McGregor, like, can we just see you inside the fucking cage, please? The hype that would have been going into that Conor McGregor fight. And don't get me wrong, the Alex Pereira Yiri was a great fill in late notice, but it doesn't compare to a Conor fight. It doesn't compare to that foggy dude playing over the speakers, Bruce Buffer with the one, the only, the notorious. It doesn't compare. I just want to see Conor McGregor back. And this is a super, super disappointing year for me around Conor McGregor because we had the tough season filmed. That should be the lock on for the fight to be made. And it doesn't get made. After that, we have the heavyweight division in totality. The entire heavyweight division. I've got Gaziev down here, some of the got fraud check. I've got Ty Tuivasa down here, some of them took another loss. But it's pretty much all of heavyweight that is just super disappointing. Because when we look at where the division was last year, don't get me wrong, it was not in its prime. Nobody thought that heavyweight was in its peak. But we had a new champion in John Jones. We had a new interim champion in Tom Aspinall. Heavyweight had, you know, a little bit going on for it. We had Sergei Pavlovich there. We had Rob Lee Spagna coming up, new contenders, some prodigies. And we were like, okay, heavyweight's got something going on. I might have redeemed myself a little bit. This year it's been terrible. We've seen the complete fall off of that blob type where they're putting them in five rounders for I don't know what reason. Keep heavyweights away from five rounders entirely. Heavyweight fight should only be three fights unless you're like at the championship level because we've seen for five fights, Shamil Gaziev put on one of the worst fights ever. Tai Tui Vasa put on a terrible fight. And these are all like ranked-ish guys like Jarzino Roizenstroik was in that fight. It was absolutely awful. So the heavyweight division is without doubt one of the most disappointing things of this year. That is the most disappointing UFC fighters. Make sure to like, sub, so, dot that YouTube channel. I'll catch you boys tomorrow. Peace.